this is an interesting case because you can look at, well, first of all, binary. You can look at the two sections and see that they pretty much match one another. These ideas here come back in these four bars there. And then the, the similarities continue. Measure four, going on, does something that then section two does as well. See how similar those are in here? Very similar. Take a listen to it. All right, so we don't have the opening coming back midway through section two. If that were true, it would be rounded, but it's not. Uh, we don't have, I guess the ends match, but there, there hasn't been a departure and then a return. That means this is simple. So when you have, we talked about two schemes up there on the board for simple. One of them is all contrast. One of them is all similar, A, B, A, B, and that's what we get right here. So we get A material, we get B material, we get A material, we get B material. The, the sense of contrast is not from, from the themes, from the melodic content. It has to do with the harmony. So let's take a peek at that. All right, we're in C, but it's tonicizing four in a hurry. See the B flat there, so that makes it C7. Five of four heads to G here. So like a secondary dominant half cadence. And okay, it looks like G7, so five of C. There's our one, five one, five one again. Oh, she's got seven each time, so five, seven, one, five, seven, one. This is all in C, but with some applied chords in there, some secondary dominance. All right, now what happens in the second part, second section to create some contrast? Well, you can see a lot of accidentals right off, and that's a big part of it. It starts almost exactly, exactly like that first measure, and then A flat major, so if that's one, it looks like we're about to tonicize four. He tricks us and goes to flat six. He's borrowing from minor. This is some mixture going on here. And then E flat. Wow, okay, so now that's a seventh in there. So that's going to sound as a five seven of A flat. And there's our A flat. So this is not just A flat for one chord. It's A flat tonicized for these three measures. One five seven one in A flat. That's quite a bit of weight given to to the A flat to flat six. Now look at this. Here's our A flat steel in the bass, but look what's up higher in an inner voice. F sharp. And that F sharp resolves up to G. The bass note resolves to a G as well. Think of chords that do that, where the bass and the and some upper part wedge apart to converge on, in this case, G. That's an augmented six kind of resolution. Uh, so you've got an E flat in there. Well, the main thing is it's augmented six. With E flat, you can make a case for it being German, but maybe you're just going to hear that as an escape tone. It's like a little European tour here. Got our Italian, French, German. If you're really itemized about it, but the um, main thing is it's an augmented six chord, and it resolves here. Cadential six four five seven. There it is. So let's just call it German six five. Cadential six four five seven one. The contrast was back here. This is pretty normal. This all fits in the key of C. The contrast comes with the tonicization of flat six. So the contrast does not come because of melody. The melody is just the, a rehashing in section two of what happened in, in section one. It's simple. So simple binary. Let's get the other part of our label. This is back on C here, the, the tonic for the whole thing. So the home key, the tonic in that home key is the way section one ends. That makes it sectional. So the whole label then is simple sectional binary. And the contrast then 
is all because of what happens in, in this section here. All right, so what we've seen is an example here of what it is to be rounded. That's a rounded binary. We've seen an example here of balanced, an end rhyme. And here, simple because there isn't contrast and return in the melody. But in every case, there's a harmonic plan to it that, that gives you contrast and gets you return. It's especially vital that we get that kind of contrast and return here because, as we said, the melody doesn't do it. All right, so three examples, each illustrating one of the main kinds of, of contra contrast and return, or the lack of it. And I hope in each, in each case that you didn't just pick up the terminology, but got a, a sense of, of how you get form. How do you get contrast? How do you get return? And what kind of patterns do they typically fall into? You see that the, the contrast usually comes at the beginning of section two. And we've seen sequences there. Uh, we've seen changes in texture. We've seen modulation to, in this case, we went to six. So modulation to a new key, five, mo motion to five, modulation to five, modulation to three. Those aren't, those aren't such a big deal, but mo motion to these create a sense of real departure harmonically. And then we've seen mixture here. So a lot of different ways in which you can, you can pull off this. And three different style periods, classical, baroque, and then here a, a late classical, early romantic composer, Schubert. Good.